In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. 
Grace to you, our peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Today, the fifth Sunday of Lent, we're moving closer to the day that we anticipate, the day of the resurrection. A good time to meditate on what is keeping us away from Jesus, what is making us keep a distance from Him and from His holy love. Today's Mass is offered for the personal intentions of all our parishioners here at Immaculate Conception. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess. charity with which out of the love for the world your son handed himself over to death through our Lord Jesus Christ your son who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit God forever and ever A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord, who opens a way in the, in the sea and a path in the mighty waters, who leads out chariots and horsemen, a powerful army, till they lie prostrate together never to rise, snuffed out and quenched like a wick. Remember not the events of the past, the things of long ago consider not. See, I am doing something new. Now it springs forth. Do you not perceive it? In the desert I make a way. In the waste land rivers, wild beasts honor me, jackals and ostriches. For I put water in the desert and rivers in the wasteland. For my chosen people to drink, the people whom I formed for myself, that they might announce my praise. The word of the Lord.
A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. Brothers and sisters, I consider everything as a loss because of the supreme good of knowing Christ Jesus my Lord. For his sake I have accepted the loss of all things, and I consider them so much rubbish that I may gain Christ and be found in him, not having any righteousness of my own based on the law, but that which comes through faith in Christ, the righteousness from God. Depending on faith to know him and the power of his resurrection and the sharing of his suffering by conforming to his death, I somehow, if somehow, I may attain the resurrection from the dead. It is not that I have already taken hold of it or have already attained perfect maturity, but I continue my pursuit in hope that I may possess it. Since I have indeed been taken possession of by Christ Jesus, brothers and sisters, I have, I for my part do not consider myself to have taken possession. Just one thing, forgetting what lies behind, but straining forward for what lies ahead. I continue my pursuit toward the goal, the prize of God's upward calling in Jesus Christ. The word of the Lord. the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus went to the Mount of Olives, but early in the morning he arrived again in the temple area and all the people started coming to him. And he sat down and taught them then the scribes and the Pharisees brought a woman who had been caught in adultery and made her stand in the middle. They said to him, Teacher, this woman was caught in the very act of committing adultery. Now, in the law, Moses commanded us to stone such women. So what do you say? They said this to test him so that they could have some charge to bring against him. Jesus bent down and began to write on the ground with his finger. But when they continued asking him, he straightened up and said to them, Let the one among you who is without sin be the first to throw a stone at her. Again, he bent down and wrote on the ground, and in response, they went away, one by one, beginning with the elders. So he was left alone with the woman before him. Then Jesus strengthened up and said to her, Woman, where are they? Has no one condemned you? She replied, No one, sir. Then Jesus said, Neither do I condemn you. 
go. And from now on, do not sin anymore. The Gospel of the Lord. As I listened to today's gospel passage and I meditated on the gospel reflection to think about the homily, I thought about the scribes and the Pharisees and how nosy they were. And that brought me to a story that I heard about a pastor who was concerned for some members of his flock. Some members of his flock who like to get on other people's business. In other words, some of his parishioners were too nosy. So the pastor organized a retreat, helping or wishing to help his parishioners to address that issue. Keeping to yourself and not become too nosy. Registration was going so well until suddenly a parishioner arrives at the front desk and he starts pacing in front of the desk, kind of looking around. So the pastor, in his loving care, asks this lovely parishioner, would you like me to sign you up for the retreat? And the parishioner was like, no, Father, I, I don't need that. But could you please tell me who signed up to attend? Probably the Pharisees and the scribes could have benefited of that retreat. Because otherwise, how would have they caught the woman in the very act of adultery? Were they spying on her? Or maybe it was just a well-known secret circulating around the community. Regardless of how they found out about this woman, they met the requirement of the law of Moses. At least they had two male witnesses to testify on the actions of this woman. They had the perfect plan. Present a moral dilemma to Jesus where he was placed to choose between obedience to the law or his compassion for the people. Within the religious culture of the people of Israel, a woman did not have any rights of her own. A woman was considered a possession of her husband. And in the Gospel passage, the woman was a married woman, having relations with another man who was not her husband, would have put his own, um, he, it was going to basically put shame on him. He, she would be affecting her husband's reputation. And the law of Moses gave the husband the right in order to vindicate his reputation to stone that kind of woman in public. The only thing required was two male witnesses. So the perfect plan was set to entrap Jesus. If Jesus chose or claimed to stone the woman to death, he would be seen as a cold-hearted individual who didn't really care for those people he had been ministering, the sinners and the outcasts. On the other hand, if Jesus chose obedience to the law, I'm, I'm sorry, if, if Jesus would have chosen compassion for the woman, he would be neglecting the law and the religious authority of the scribes and Pharisees, and no reason to have him pro prosecute him. But the Pharisees and the scribes did not expect Jesus' response. He just bent down and wrote with his finger on the ground. St. John doesn't share with us what he was writing. Regardless of what he was writing, 
That response didn't satisfy the religious authorities who just kept pressing him to give an answer. What do you say about this woman? And when Jesus tell them, or tells them for the free of sin to throw the first stone, he caught the Pharisees at their own game. Because the Pharisees and religious leaders knew no one was sinless. No one could follow the law to perfection. Not the two male witnesses, not the scribes, not the Pharisees, not the onlookers. Anyone who even thought about grabbing a stone would be committing the sin of pride. Basically, they would be saying or placing themselves in the opposition of God, placing judgment on the woman. So, they left one by one until it was only Jesus and the woman left. In our spiritual lives, this gospel passage continues to take place in our heart. Even as we try to follow Jesus, follow the commandments, sometimes we stumble and fall. And we may see as the Pharisees, those well-intended brothers and sisters who are trying to keep us or bring us back to Jesus. But sometimes, the Pharisees we encounter can be more dangerous and intimidating. Those Pharisees are those inner thoughts, inner doubts, inner questions that come up in our hearts. Like, what do you, why would you go to confession? You are going to see sin again anyway. Or, why would you go to confession to a priest? He's a sinner as much as you are. Or why would you even try giving up this sin or that addiction? Because you are going to fall anyways. Sometimes the rock that starts to hit in us are those inner voices that start comparing us to other people, reminding us that we will never be like them. Other times, it is the whispering that starts hitting our hearts, reminding us of all the failed opportunities that we didn't take. As we continue our spiritual journey, brothers and sisters, may we always remember of despite all the Pharisees that we encounter, despite all the doubts in our minds and in our hearts that may come up, may the Holy Spirit remind us always that Jesus never leaves us. That Jesus is the one who stays after all those doubts, whisperings, and thoughts throw stones at us. Jesus remains with us. And He was just waiting for us to embrace us and to remind us to sin no more.
we were dropped in God's mercy, we present our humble petitions. That all followers of Christ humbly recognize their weaknesses and seek for the Almighty God, and having a still. 
and your servants the teachings of a Christian faith. Graciously purify them by the working of this sacrifice through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. So that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the seven spirits, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. At his command, we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of Therefore, 
as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servants Francis our Pope and Anthony our Bishop, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family, whom you have summoned before you, in your compassion and merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. You hear my words, hear my name.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb.
let us pray. We pray, Almighty God, that we may always be counted among the members of Christ, in whose body and blood we have communion, who lives and reigns forever and ever. during Lent. Ladies Auxiliary Monthly Business Meeting will be Tuesday, April 5th, gathered at 9.30 and the meeting will begin at 10 a.m. All the women of the parish are welcome. If you would like to honor a loved one with an Easter flower on the altar during Easter Sunday, please see the bulletin for a form that can be filled out and returned along with donation to the church office by Tuesday, April 12th. We will have our first communion retreat on Saturday, April 9th, for all of the students preparing to receive the sacrament in May. A letter will be sent home with the session times. Please call the church office and reserve a time. We are very excited to see these students receive the First Communion, and be part of the Lord's Table. There is also a letter that at the different parishes we were asked to read. This letter comes from Father Jeff Eber, who is the Vocation Director at the Diocese of Limbrook, and the letter reads as follows. Dear friends in Christ, on July 1st, 2010, we established the Holy Thursday Collection to support the education of our seminarians. Since that time, you have donated over $3.9 billion. As of 2009, Bishop Taylor has ordained 43 new priests for our diocese. Your generosity has been overwhelming, and I want to thank you for your prayers and support. I am pleased to share with you the good news of your holy investment in faith. This past year, the Diocese of Little Rock ordained five men to the priesthood. They faithfully and enthusiastically serve your needs all across our diocese. Many of you have envelopes for this collection in your monthly packets. I have also asked every pastor to place envelopes in the pews this weekend. You can put the envelope in the parish collection basket, or you can mail your contribution directly to the diocese. I want to thank you on behalf of Bishop Taylor, our seminarians, and myself for your generous support and prayers. I am confident that you will respond generously again this year to the Holy Thursday Collection, so we can continue to build and to invest for the future and to make a difference well past our time. Sincerely in Christ, Father Jeff Eber, Director of Vocations, Diocese of Rome. And during the Lenten season, we have a special blessing for the people, so I'm going to invite you to stand up and to bow your heads for this special blessing. Bless, O Lord, your people, to love for the gift of your mercy, and grant that what, at your prompting, they desire, they may receive by your generous gift, through Christ our Lord. Amen. And before we find a blessing, I want to wish all of you a blessed Sunday and a blessed week. Amen. The Lord be with you. Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit.